Well, it's been a weird year, to say the least, uh, an awful time for many. Uh, and that does put into perspective not being able to ride my bike as much as I'd want, or even what happened to me last week. But let's keep it lighthearted because I still honestly believe that riding a motorcycle is one of the most enjoyable uh, ways to get around and one of the best ways to unwind. The fact that I was in an accident is kind of irrelevant to motorcycling because everything we do carries an element of risk. Uh, and the fact is I just got unlucky. So clearly this isn't a particularly good video setup. I'm looking straight into the sun. The bike's heavily contrasted, half it's in shadow. But this is where it was left by the recovery company and I can't move it at the moment. So I just wanted to take the opportunity to make a bit of an impromptu video before the bike's taken back to Royal Enfield. Just to cover some of the things I haven't uh, and while I have done far less than I wanted to. There's some things I kind of wanted to cover with you and also let's talk about how it crashes. So before I start, when this video goes live there's still a chance for you to win a Royal Enfield fly screen for the Intercept 650. Not this one, that wouldn't be very fair. Uh, a brand new one, if you head over to the link at uh, the competition section of rewards.bennett's.co.uk you can enter to win that. Link's in the description so make sure you enter. So this was a bit of an unlucky situation really. I was waiting to join a roundabout, the car in front of me was hesitating I was just keeping very steady movement, just keeping the traffic rolling. Uh, but the car behind me had seen the huge gap and was looking for that gap, turned around and saw that the traffic in front of him hadn't moved too late and ran into the back of me. As he hit me, I was thrown backwards, but my body kind of twisted sideways. So as I went back, I hit my, the side of my ribs on the, um, on the rear grab rail of the bike uh, and that, that hit me there. And then as I was pushed into the car in front, that threw me forward and, and then it was all over. I really initially thought it was that throwing into the car in front that, that did the damage. Uh, and so I've ended up with two broken ribs and a pneumothorax. I should say that I was using the Technologic DC1 camera at the time, which records front and rear. So that's how I managed to get this footage. It's a good compromise between a dash cam and an action camera. You can check out my full review at Bennett's Bike Social and I've linked it in the, um, in the description. So let's have a little look around the bike and see what's obviously damaged. I'd really like to take this apart and go into really minute detail about everything that's happened to it. But I'm afraid I haven't got the strength at the moment to be able to do it. Um, I can't move anything. I've got a friend coming over tonight uh, to help me get it moved about. Um, but unfortunately, although it was only about a 10 mile an hour crash, the way the car hit the bike, obviously it's folded up the exhaust, but it has bent the subframe. Now, because the subframe's part of the main frame, that's effectively going to have written the bike off um, because we've got significant frame damage. And it's a real shame. Um, it's quite surprising because, you know, that's a fairly solid bit of metal at the back, but it has bent it up. I've got my heated vest on. Keep me nice and warm. I'm still on brand. I'm not getting too cold. So, of course, we can see the exhaust. On this side, it's been bent up. The car's obviously hit it slightly from this side, folded the exhaust up. I've got uh, a melted patch on the back of my um, motorcycle trousers, so I think as the bike's gone over, somehow that's caught me and melted a bit. Obviously, I, besides the ribs and the impact on my chest, everything else has been fine. So the tail unit has clearly been folded right underneath. I don't know how it's folded this far. I guess it's actually because this is plastic. We've got the metal here. That was enough to flick it under. The problem is you can see the bend in here around this point. Now this should be completely straight along here. So it's lifted that up and yeah, that's, that's kind of what's gonna make this bike a write-off, sadly. I can't see any obvious damage on the wheel. I, I, I can't get it spinning to have a proper look. There's nothing obvious on the swing arm. Really, I need to get the exhaust off to be able to have a proper look at the swing arm. I'll know more when Royal Enfield's had this back because obviously they'll have it apart and they'll, they'll probably have a good look at it. So moving on, we've got the brake lever. That's been bent. Yeah, if this was my bike, I could straighten that out. But this has gone beyond, uh, I can patch that up. But obviously, this is an insurance um, job to, to fix this. So obviously that will be replaced. The peg's fine. The crash bar on the right has taken, taken some of the impact because but not, it didn't need to do a lot because obviously all the impact happened at the front, uh, sorry, at the rear. And as the bike's been pushed into the car in front, it's fallen onto its right hand side. But that crash bar has protected that lovely engine casing. So, you know, and it still looks fine. Great, you know, I like those engine bars. I think they look in keeping and they've clearly worked. Tank, no damage. So lovely to see that this beautiful chrome tank is fine. Mirrors are looking fine. Slight scuff on the bar end and a scuff on the brake lever. 
Moving on to the headlight, obviously that's knackered. Uh, the whole headlight casing is broken. It looks like the hangers might be okay. And it's, there's bends to this uh, fly screen. This won't be the one you'll win. Moving down, we've got damage to, obviously the, the mud guard's broken. There's no obvious signs of damage to the front wheel. I couldn't tell without having it upright and being able to spin it. I couldn't tell you if there is. And the forks, I don't think they're bent. They look okay. I initially thought there might have been a bit of a crease in the headstock when I was looking at the bike as it came off the truck, but they can't be because to have done any damage there, that's a very solid piece. We'd have seen um, damage to the forks. And I can't see anything obvious, but really the forks need taken out to see if there's any crease there. I think the front wheel might have twisted slightly, and that's quite common in off-road bikes. When I've crashed off-road, the uh, forks kind of get twisted, the wheel gets twisted around, and it twists the fork slightly. All it needs doing is loosening everything off and it just pings back into the right position. Sometimes you need to bounce it up and down. Again, it's, it's impossible to tell and even if I could take this apart, I shouldn't because Royal Enfield need it back to be able to assess properly what the damage is. So overall, yeah, sadly it is written off and it is frustrating because that was a very low speed, minor incident. Uh, a simple mistake was made um, and it's ended up with a bit of damage to me. Uh, and sadly, a written off motorbike. Um, but I, don't, yeah, I genuinely don't want to dwell on this too much because I still love riding motorbikes. And in the 21 years or more I've been riding, I've had this unlucky thing happen once. Uh, I have fallen off bikes before, but that's been my fault. And I can look back and say why, I, why that happened and me being an idiot. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, these things happen. These things happen in all walks of life. Moving on. I wanted to quickly cover my favourite modifications that have happened to this bike while I've had it. So, when I first got the bike from Royal Enfield as a loner, it had some modifications already on it. It had these compact engine guards, which are £109.99. I definitely recommend these, clearly. Uh, but they look really look in keeping with the bike, and they do help protect that lovely engine. So I think, you know, they're, they're a great addition. They just look right on there. This bike's really easy to manage. I love that I can just pull up somewhere at the side of the road, gravelly incline or anything like that. And unlike on a bigger adventure bike or anything like that, I can easily just stop and put it down, no worries. But if you did lose your balance on this, I mean, obviously those exhausts are going to get a bit of a scrape on them if you just laid it down, you know, if you, if you, if you lost your footing. But I, I really like those engine bars, so I'd, I'd recommend those as a good option. Bar end weights, 34 99 they were on it when I got it. They're cosmetic, really. Um, the kind of thing I'd maybe treat myself to one day, but not something, you know, I'd need to rush out for. Fly screen, that's currently 99 99 I like this. Uh, remember, if you use the link in the description, you've got the opportunity to win one of these. If you've got an Interceptor, Interceptor 650, please do uh, go through there and enter. You'll also see a lot of great competitions there. If you explore further in rewards.bennets.co.uk, okay, you'll see some of the incredible offers and discounts on some fantastic motorcycle kit that we've got for, for our members. So do check it out. Anyway, it's not big. It's not going to be like a, a, like a touring screen, but it does seem to take some of the force off your chest as it blows the wind up. So it, it is worth having, and ultimately, I think it looks good too. Uh, finally, the sump guards at 64.99 at the moment. Now, when I took that off when I first got the bike in one of the first videos, which you can see those all linked in the description, there were some scuffs to the frame. So clearly, it would have worked for whoever had this bike before me. And I, I think it looks neat as well. So yeah, that's a, a, a fair little addition. If you're gonna be off-roading up some curbs, <laughs> um, then great. And obviously if you are taking it further afield, uh, yeah, worth having. So I've also added the Royal Enfield Touring Seat. That's 139.99. Now the Interceptor isn't the comfiest bike I've ever ridden over long distance. I find myself jiggling my bum after about 45 minutes. Um, but I don't mind it, genuinely, because I really love this bike for potting around and exploring and looking at great scenery. Uh, the touring seat doesn't seem to make any difference to me or to Helen as my pillion. It looks slightly better than the standard one, but I honestly didn't really notice any difference. Touring mirrors at £134.99. They're very modern looking and slightly closer in than the standard mirrors, which might make them a bit better for filtering past vans. Um, but honestly, I prefer the standard chrome mirrors. They just look more in keeping with this bike. I definitely, I wouldn't have them. The SW Motec Legend luggage. So I took the bags off because I needed to see what the damage was underneath. But this is one of the panniers. I'll put up some clips from where I've been using it. It's £257.47, so it is expensive. That's full retail price though, to be fair. 
but honestly it's been brilliant on the um videos i've been shooting and just on ride outs it's been it's been great it looks right on the bike and it's lovely being able to put stuff in there it's not totally waterproof it is shower proof um but if if you need it waterproof um and you know if you get caught in a proper rainstorm uh that water is going to get through there but it does come with covers you can put over it i'd have liked to have seen it having a bonded material behind it with a roll top bag it could have been made pretty much watertight i do really like this stuff uh, it does look good uh, and big thanks to the police officer who picked the bike up after the accident um, to get to the chocolates that were in the right hand pannier trapped underneath it and he got them out for me and gave them to me and I was able to give those to the ambulance crew uh, when they dropped me off at the hospital so thanks for that. The Hagon rear shocks they're £206.50 so these are relatively affordable really now they're not going to transform the bike you know they're not going to make it a completely different machine but they do seem to take out some of the choppiness from the ride and I do think they're worth it. They also, I think, look a lot better than the standard ones with that piggyback rear shock on them. Um, so as a way of starting to kind of take your bike on a bit, making it look a bit better, but also making it ride better, it's not a bad ride as standard, honestly. It's, it's not bad at all. But these are a nice little touch that can give you um, a bit of a better ride on this bike. So yeah, I'd say they're worth it. And finally, the Hepco & Becker Peg Relocation Kit, which is £42. Now, if you take a pillion, these are essential. They move the pillion's foot slightly further forward and Helen hated this bike uh, before I put those on even with these bags off which we had to take off because she couldn't get her feet around them onto the pillion pegs even with those off she really didn't like going on this and she's only five foot three with those pegs on she loved it it totally transformed the bike and we were really looking forward to going doing some coastal rides on this bike uh, and we would have obviously got some more from that and, and been able to talk about more things we can do with it and she was looking forward to that but sadly that's not to be maybe something in the future. So overall, I'd say there's nothing you have to buy for the Interceptor 650 once you've bought the bike, unless you're taking a pillion, then you absolutely need that peg relocation kit. Fortunately, it looks good. Fortunately, it's not too expensive. Other than that, everything else is nice to have, not need to have. Now, the other thing I wanted to do was talk about how well this survives British winters. It hasn't been neglected, but it certainly hasn't been pampered. It has spent a few days and nights outside, sadly. Uh, there's a bit of things been able to move around, different work I've been able to do. Um, it's not showing anything obvious. The only bit that's kind of annoying is a little screw up the top in the headlight that's rusty on the top. I could easily clean that up and touch it in with a bit of paint. But the finish generally is very good. And uh, the finish on the um, frame and everything is really solid. There's no obvious signs of se any serious corrosion and certainly nothing seems to be coming up with other people who've got them of serious issues with this bike. So it is relatively affordable bike it's it's got budget parts of it it's got bits that show that it isn't an expensive machine but it's well made honestly if you look after it it should weather very well use a decent corrosion protectant and all i'd say is just watch the video up there in that link and in the description where you can see my seven month long test of corrosion protectants to find out which is the best one to use and if you choose the right one your bike will easily last just give it a little bit of care i i treated this before as soon as I got it, and all it needs is a bit of a clean, but sadly, sorry Royal Enfield, I can't clean it right now. For now though, I can tell you that I've honestly thoroughly enjoyed this machine. It might be a bit heavy feeling to pick up off the side stand, but it's so low and easy to manage. It's just a real pleasure to potter around on. It's far from slow, you know, I, I tend to enjoy riding around about 60 on it, but it's, it's got no problems on motorways, uh, you know, motorway speeds and above. It's absolutely fine. Yeah, that motor works really well. It's, it is, a pleasure. It's not comfy like a Tourer, but I do enjoy spending all day on it. Some people don't seem to like the ergonomics, but they do seem to be in the minority. I'm five foot ten and I've got no problems with it at all. Would I buy one? Yeah, I honestly would. I probably wouldn't buy this chrome one. If I was going to buy one, as beautiful as it is, and it does attract a lot of attention, I prefer the painted ones, so I'd go either for the Orange Crush, which is 5699 at the moment, or the Baker Express, which is 5899. This glitter and dust finish is 6199 Still a good price. And it is beautifully classic looking, but I just prefer the paint one, especially with the Baker Express with the black wheels. I just think they look really cool. Now, no one video is gonna tell you everything you need to know about a bike, but if you are seriously considering buying one of these, I'd just say, obviously, have a look through the series that I've made in the, in the, in the description. You'll be able to see everything I've covered in there. And with that in mind, go and test ride one, or at least go and sit on one in a dealer, because if you like the look of it, if you get on with the ergonomics, and to be honest, pretty well everybody does, 
you really won't be disappointed. Honestly, I'd say snap one up because these things are a bargain. Ellie, you're gonna be on telly. <laughs> Ellie, don't complain. It's only YouTube. <laughs> Ellie, it'll go viral. Don't worry. Oh, look at that tail. <laughs> Ellie. <laughs> Hello, weasel. <laughs> oh. You gonna help me? I could really do with an assistant. Oh yeah, that'd be a good oh. idea, wouldn't it, Ellie? And if you could move my stuff around, that'd be helpful because it yeah. kind of hurts. Don't overdo it. Or no, I won't. Uh, 